Hi everyone, Brian Crock here. I made that stupid intro video, so you know this tutorial is going to be the real deal. Anyways, ever since I first released my first big band album, Big Heart Machine, uh, and also after Adam Neely made this awesome video about irrational time signatures, which featured Big Heart Machine, I've received a fairly regular question in emails from people around the world. Basically, hey man, how do you do that? Or more precisely, Hey man, how do you make notation software correctly write and play back irrational time signatures, a thing that no notation software was designed to do? And I always say, I promise I will explain how to do that in some forum, but it's a bit too complicated to write in an email. Well, now, years tardy, I'm keeping that promise. And I'm going to show you how to do this on both Sibelius and Finale using my composition, Memphis. Let's hear what it sounds like. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, trip up, let one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, you get the idea. So that's what irrational time signatures can sound like. And um, this particular tune features four three, which is a pretty cool one. Um, in case you don't remember, the way you read irrational time signatures is the denominator of the fraction tells us that half note triplets get the beat because if you divide a whole note by three, you get the duration of a half note triplet. The numerator, the four, tells us that there are four of those half note triplet subdivisions. And that's going to be weird because four half note, half note triplets doesn't fit into any neat kind of uh, notation. So uh, I found that irrational time signatures are the simplest, most elegant solution to this scenario. And unfortunately, there's no straightforward way to do this. A lot of jiggering must be done. So in Sibelius, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the contents of this measure and delete that there. Okay, so first you want to decide how is your music going to be displayed. In this case, since I'm using a bar of 4-3, you can leave the measure as a 4-4 four, four bar. But say you wanted a bar of 2-3, well then you would need to create a measure of 2-4 and hide the time signature with shift command H. And now you'll have two beats and you can use those to um, play two half note triplets. However, that's not what we want to do. So I'm leaving it as a bar of 4-4. Four, four. So first thing you do is write out all your music. Uh, this is what it looks like for my tune. And then you can use special text, um, which you can find here, to create a beautiful looking 4-3. You might need to just drag your notes out a little bit to make room for that time signature. However, this is not going to play back correctly. So this is most people's problem. And that's not what we want. We want a slower tempo. So now we got to take out our calculators and figure out what the new tempo for this rational meter is going to be. We're going to take the original tempo, which is 112, and divide it by the denominator of our original time signature. So the value of the beat in your original time signature, which in this case is 4. So we get 28. Now we multiply that by the denominator of our new irrational bar uh, or the subdivision, which is 3. And that gives us 84. So we know that we want our new, I just did option command T to create tempo text. Then I control click in here, quarter note equals 84. So now it will play back correctly. Okay, but you don't want your players to see this tempo. That's too much information. The whole purpose of an irrational time signature is to make it slick and easy to read. So you do shift command H and hide that time signature. Now you need to do this again. Option command T, quarter note, and do a metric modulation back to the original tempo, which was 112, and hide that as well. All right, the last thing we want to do is make sure that the actual real durations of these notes is accurately displayed in the measure. 
because right now it looks like we have a half note and another half note, which adds up to a whole note, which we know isn't true because we're looking at a bar of 4-3. And based on the math we did before, we know that a bar of 4-3 has four half note triplets. The way that we do this is by using an open tuplet bracket. I've seen this in the scores of Darcy James Argue in his Brooklyn Babylon score and also in Asyla by Thomas Addis. And I think it looks nice and it's pretty obvious what you're trying to tell um, the player. Because if you'll remember what a half note triplet looks like, normally we would start with a half note, we'd go over to note input and create our tuplet. The shortcut for that is command three. And now we have three half note triplets, which add up to four beats. And the way this rhythm would normally be displayed would be a whole note plus another half note tuplet here. So what we really want this measure to contain is two of these, two of these whole notes under a half note tuplet. And an open bracket will just cut off this last part of the, of the bracket so that we're telling the, the player it's a couple tuplets but not the full thing. And the way to do that is by, under notations, creating your own user-defined symbol. Go over here and click this little arrow that says Edit Symbols. Down here under User Defined, we're given a bunch of blank boxes that you can, you can create as many as you want, but they've set up a bunch to encourage you to make your own symbols. And once you know how to do this, it's such a powerful tool in Sibelius because you can do a lot with your own user-defined symbols. So now, click on an empty one click edit and we're going to use bar numbers parts style of font to create that number three that will be the basis of our tuplet because to me that looks a lot like what a tuplet text normally looks like so now we have our main symbol here and we can add elements to it so I'm going to add a lyric hyphen and I'm also going to add a start bracket which is right here under the conductor tab now you can move these objects around just with these arrows it's pretty easy to do so line them up click on the lyric hyphen and move that over here and now this is what your symbol is going to look like if you wanted to you could spend more time messing with these by creating your own music font or creating a subsection of a music font if you say wanted to make this hyphen the same width as this bracket if you're super ocd or if you're doing this professionally for a score that's going to be published um, you could also make the hyphen longer you can make the bracket longer depending on how you want it to be displayed in the score but i'm not going to obsess about it too much because once you create the symbol and attach it to a note it's relatively pretty small so your 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 casual observer isn't really going to notice the difference in widths so now that we have it looking like this there's still one more step which is we want to remove these stems because like i said earlier these are two half note triplets which should look like a whole note underneath a, a bracket. And the way you do that, remove the stems, is shift option eight. Shift option eight. And this here, this is exactly what your measure should look like. So now we've got two half note triplets and two more half note triplets. And you wanna go through and do that to every staff that's part of this system. And that's all there is to it. So it's a few steps, but at the end of the day, you get this really um, beautiful looking notation and it's a very simple way to do a short metric modulation that's simple to read, simple to understand. You may get some crusty uh, conservative musicians who are annoyed by this because they've never seen it before, but don't worry about them, that's their problem. So now how do we do this in finale? Um, here's Memphis in finale. So it basically works the same way, except it's a little less elegant. We need to create our uh, time signature with expression text. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Click in the measure. I've created them for you, but let's see what it looks like. You need to do both the numerator and denominator separately. So I created a four. 
then I duplicated it, edit, create a three, and the font we want to use is Maestro, size 24. That'll look exactly like the time signature that comes uh, with a typical time signature and finale. So I created my three. You have to just place it, um, just basically eyeball it, and then create your four and align them so they look like a beautiful time signature. There you go. You have to create a new tempo again. Quarter note equals 84. We already did the math. And then you have to hide that in the, in the score and the parts. You don't want anyone to see it. So this will play back. And again, you have to create a new tempo. So I'm going to duplicate that. Edit 12. OK, assign. And then hide it there as well. And now it's going to play back perfectly in Finale. Now we've got a couple more steps. We want this time signature to show up on every staff of the system. So the way to do that is to get your expression tool, double click in there, and with the number highlighted, go under this drop down window by the assign button and say assign to all staves. Check all staves. Now we got to do the same with the three. Assign to all staves. And there you go. Now we've got that time signature showing up on every staff. The last thing we have to do is again change the, the display. So the way that I've figured out how to do this is by using the shape designer. Um, so we want that open bracket with the three above each of these notes. So you click your expression tool, go under miscellaneous. I created one for you here, but let's do a new one just so you all can see how to do it. Create miscellaneous expression. And you do this under the shape tool. This is a little used in my experience tool and it's great. Um, you just click create. You want to create it pretty close to this circle here because that's where it's going to show up. So the number three, then use this line tool to simply draw the brackets up and then across and again across. Don't stress too much about it being straight. It'll fix it for you. Okay, and there you go. Now I've created this open tuplet bracket. Click assign and it'll show up right above where you want it to be. Assign another one here and do that to every note in this system. And then finally, we have to get rid of these stems, as I explained earlier. And so the way we're going to do that is go to Special Tools, this little wrench here. Click on the Stem Length icon. And just click and drag your stems down. You, again, don't have to be too accurate. It'll make it look nice and pretty for you. And then finally, you may want to adjust the, the spacing of your measure. You do that by clicking your measure tool. The second box from the bottom that shows up, you click in there. Eventually you'll get something that looks like this. And so there you go. It's a bunch of steps. It's time consuming, but it will save so much time in the rehearsal process that it's really worth taking the extra 10 or 15 minutes to do this. I love irrational time signatures. I think they're actually just a really fun tool to get your band um, thinking differently, uh, listening more closely and trying to synchronize something, uh, that's a little bit daring. It creates some danger in the music. It feels like a little glitch, but you're all glitching simultaneously. So it kind of gives the audience this feeling of oh, how did they do that? What on earth was that? Uh, Hey man, how did they do that? So anyways, there's a lot of irrational time signatures on the new big heart machine record, which is coming out May 15th, 2020. Um, and on my next little record as well, which is coming out in July, there's really, really crazy irrational time signature, uh, stuff. Thank you for listening. If anyone has any questions about how to use finale or Sibelius or wants to do some kind of crazy notation that they don't know how to do, feel free to ask me in the comments on YouTube and I might just make a, Hey man, how do you do that video about your question? Thanks, everybody.